guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i will be giving you guys a little bit of a job update if you've seen my last couple of vlogs then you know that i am no longer at my first lab that i've worked at for about a year and a half now and i'm at a new lab right now so if you're new i was previously working in a clea lab like i said i was there for about a year and a half and at my lab what we were basically doing was testing patient samples for certain mutations associated with specific types of cancer typically these patient samples were patients who were looking to be enrolled in or who were currently enrolled in clinical trials looking for certain drugs that target these specific types of cancer and so the overall goal of this personalized it's called personalized medicine and so the overall goal is if someone has cancer depending on what type it is instead of giving them chemotherapy with no specific target if they know these different mutations and specifically what type of cancer this person or the person the patient is affected by then their aim is to develop drugs that will specifically target whatever mutations or genes are affected, thus causing the cancer. So the goal is to eliminate generalized chemotherapy, which can have detrimental effects on the human body and move toward personalized oncology care. Like I said, I was in a CLIA lab, so all of the samples that we were testing were from patients. Every now and again, we did have samples that were from physicians and their patients, but for the most part, we were working with a lot of researchers and universities here in the US, across the country, and all over the world who were enrolling patients in these different clinical trials looking for specific treatments for certain types of cancer. And so we were testing for, and so at my previous lab, we had different assays that we were using to test for different types. So we had an assay that tested specifically for breast cancer, one for HPV, we had one for head and neck, pancreatic, as well as some others and more that we were in the process of developing. And so because I was in a clear lab, that's all we were doing day in and day out. We were getting these patient samples, testing them according to the assay if patients didn't have any mutations then typically they weren't eligible to be enrolled in the clinical trial that they were you know looking to enroll in if they did depending on the progression they were able to enroll throughout the year we were getting these same patient samples as well as new samples and basically reporting back whether the patient was showing progression regression, nothing at all. And these were helping these researchers develop and move forward in whatever drug they were giving these patients and if it was making any differences. With my previous lab, like I said, I was in the CLIA lab. At my current company, I am in the R&D lab or research and development. And so we do have a CLIA lab as well and I help out there on an as needed basis, but for the most part, I'm in the R&D department. So the main difference in my position at my new company compared to where I used to work is that, like I said, I worked in the CLIA lab, whereas here I'm working in the research and development lab or the R&D lab. My new company does have a CLIA lab as well and I work there basically on an as needed basis. My main position is in the R&D lab. So in the R&D lab, what we're doing is helping develop these assays that are proven to work for different diagnoses as far as oncology. That way the CLIA lab can use them to test these patients for these different cancer mutations or whatever is the objective of, you know, whatever the physician or researcher or company is wanting. So basically it's our job to figure out, you know, what time you need to be on the thermocycler for what temperature, doing what reactions. It's our job to figure out which reagents work best, which reagents don't, what gives the most yield, if you do this, if you do this, what happens, and all, documenting all these effects, documenting different variabilities, and just testing every single variable and reagent and sample. That way it can be get to the stage where the FDA is approving it, and we can pass this assay on to the CLIA. I'm assigned to a specific assay, and I'm coming in around the, I would say, um, the third or fourth stage out of about eight or nine stages. And so with this, it's not a quick process. It's something that can take years. So the project that I'm working on the timeline is aiming to be done around 2023. And that's for like the main priority. So the main priority that we're working on, we're testing for a certain type of cancer and a certain gene. But in doing so, we're also on the side seeing what other types of things we can test for using this specific assay. That way, later down the line, we can also submit these types of things and get these cleared for approval as well. So it's not a short process, it's a pretty lengthy process. And like I said, there's more projects that we are looking for in the future. So it's something that is ongoing, it's ever-changing, and it's very needed. So my current title right now 
is a research associate and when I'm in the CLIA lab, then my title is technically a genomic technologist. Typically, like I said, I'm in the R&D lab and then if CLIA is short, then I jump in there and test the assays that we already have approved on patient samples. Like I said, this job is also in the field of oncology, so very similar to what I was doing at my previous lab, both labs use the next generation sequencing. The lab that I'm working in now and the lab that I was working in previously both uses the next generation sequencing. You can Google it and learn all about it, but it's sequencing the whole human genome and it typically can be done in about a day or two. So it's very fast, very effective, and it's very popular, especially when it comes to cancer research. I started this position around the beginning of November. Like I said, I am a research associate when I'm in the R&D lab and I'm a genome technologist when I'm in the CLIA lab. I found out about this position through one of their recruiters. So their recruiter reached out to me, explained everything, what the job is, the company, and basically just went from there. The whole process took about um, maybe a week and a half before I got the official job offer and I put in my two weeks at my previous job and the recruiter reached out to me through LinkedIn. So that is a good way as well when you're trying to look for these different um, technologist positions. Have your um, LinkedIn updated. I typically see there's a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn, especially um, looking to fill um, places at these different types of laboratories. So LinkedIn is also a good place to make sure that you are keeping an up-to-date record of what you're doing, where you went to school, and your different skill set. If you've seen a lot of the recent vlogs that I've posted, you'll see that I don't have a lot of lab footage, and a lot of the times I am sitting at my desk doing work that way. And the reason that is, is because I'm already done um, the main training. There, my, my company was looking to hire four new research associates. I was the first one hired, and so um, I didn't begin training with everyone, but my training took maybe two weeks because it's similar methods as to what my previous lab did, and so it didn't take me long to learn it. When verification comes up, that is basically us testing tons and tons and tons of sample back to back to back. Just basically trying to make sure that the process that we have and that we have established and written down works and that we can show the FDA that it does work. And so that's basically what we're preparing for. That should start um, around, I wanna say, I wanna say the timeline was around the end of January, but it could possibly be pushed back to March. Like I said, it's a lot of working parts and doing um, research and development. There's a timeline, but then there's also like the adjusted timeline as things come up. So that's what we're doing right now. I am training on, I do train on other things, like smaller things, but it's not enough for me to like actually record anything or record much. So as I start getting more things under my belt, hopefully I can show you guys some things, but until now, I probably will be at my desk for most of the day. And what I've been doing at my desk is basically doing, um, data entry, I'm doing online trainings, and then I'm doing any other projects, like small projects that are assigned to me throughout the week. So that's basically all that I'm doing at work right now. That's why it's a bit slow in my vlogs right now. It's because, you know, we're kind of getting these final things ready so that we can move forward with our verification process. And so I will try and keep you guys updated on everything. I will maybe come back and explain to you guys the stage that we are in right now, which is feasibility and characterization and that way I can take you guys along and show you the whole process of seeing what it's like to be in a research and development lab and seeing the process of developing an assay specifically for um, next generation sequencing and this pre precision oncology testing. All right guys, that's all for this video. I hope this video was helpful and that you guys were able to take away and learn a little bit more about what it is to be working in the laboratory and the different options that you have. As always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.